What's up, gang? This Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, the villain, villain, Trilligan, and we are back on Umineko no Naku Koro Ni. Last episode. Ah, oh, it's been a minute since I last recorded this. I've been so locked in on fate and Tsukihime. I haven't touched this in a minute. Everybody was getting on. I forget the girl name. We saw her backstory and stuff. And apparently it was was it rosa or it was her name start with an e i forget but the orange hair auntie she was like she did some terrible things to old girl all right we're picking up here after the argument i guess we're back with battling we crossed the hall again on our way to the entrance as we did we once again spotted that witch's portrait however Spotted is probably not the best word to describe that experience. It was more like our eyes were inexorable or ex inexor ah, inexorably drawn to it. That woman's eyes with their sage-like glamour definitely had the power to make those who viewed it stand rooted to the spot. So this is the witch. So this is the witch Beatrice. One of that story is true. Huh? Battler, are you stupid? I mean, Battler doesn't believe? Back when he had asked what the picture was, the first person to tell him had been Maria. Therefore, when Battler showed signs of doubt, Maria must have felt that Battler didn't have faith in her. Of course, that wasn't what Battler meant. Maria ran up to the porch and began banging a plate hanging banging on a plate hanging below it. Maybe the title of the portrait was written there. Maria, trying to prove that she wasn't lying, obstinately continued to hit the plate. Ah, sorry about that. It's not like I doubt anything you said, Maria. Battler believes! <laughs> My goodness. When he patted Maria's head and apologized, she seemed to accept it, sticking out her chest proudly. <laughs> Ew, ew. Hold on. Ew, ew. What's this? My beloved witch Beatrice. Behold the sweet fish river. What's with this weird, huge epitaph? The play did have, a, have the title of the portrait written on it, but it was much too big to contain only that. Beneath the title was what appeared to be a long epitaph. If you just skimmed over it, several unnerving words would jump out at you. Incredible, isn't it? Grandfather had that made. Pretty deep, huh? I know! It's the place where the gold's hidden! Wait, is that the story about the Ushira Mia family's hidden gold? Now there's another thing I remember from long ago. Hold on, Aniki. Is this for real? Grandfather had this made, but he never said anything about this picture or the epitaph. Even so, amongst the family, it is often whispered that it indicates the location of grandfather's hidden gold, and that he will relinquish the inheritance and the gold to the person who solves the riddle. I heard that too, I heard that too! Lots and lots of gold! Well, something like that. Something like 10 metric go tons of gold bars. I think it's fake though. Still, when you read about it in an epitaph like this, it almost seems real. I think I already explained grandfather's upbringing. But let me also mention that Oshira Mia family's legend of the gold. Grandfather succeeded the Oshira Mia family after it was destroyed in the Great Kanto Earthquake. And by successfully riding the stormy seas after the war, he managed to accumulate great wealth. That much of the story everyone knows. However, this is where the strange part begins. Part of it involves Grandfather's black magic obsession, so its credibility is extremely low, but... Well, wait until the end before you die to make fun of it. After the war, Grandfather correctly predicted what the future would hold and won in a huge gamble, accumulating a vast store of wealth. But there's a mysterious legend about how he gained his initial funding. 
grandfather came from a branch family and had no connections in the business world or the financial world. Even though he later built connections with the occupying forces, he supposedly started as a nameless person who hadn't yet gained anyone's trust. It takes trust to gather money, but there's no way anyone would lend money to someone they didn't trust. How did grandfather, who had no reputation at all, manage to obtain his first vast chunk of funds? When asked that question, grandfather supposedly answered like this. On a certain day, I encountered the golden rich witch Beatrice. Grandfather then went on and on about his continuing research into alchemy and techniques for summoning demons in order to become a great magician. And the entity summoned as a result of the demon calling ceremony was the golden witch Beatrice. Did he also summon this hard music? Oh my goodness, this is like, like this is like tongue kissing my ear. He then apparently made a contract by which he would receive fortune and honor in exchange for his own soul. The witch then granted grandfather 10 tons of gold. Grandfather used this gold as collateral to prepare a vast quantity of funds, which he then used to multiply his wealth many times over and revive the Ushiramiya family. It seems this story is so old that even our parents were told when they were still children. So back when our parents were young, they explored this island in all sorts of ways, believing that the gold grandfather had received from the witch might be hidden somewhere. However, since there was the danger of them getting lost in the, in the abandoned forest, grandmother began to spread the story that the witch lived in the forest, and approaching it was forbidden. I remember that old story. When we were little, we also went about the island searching for treasure after our parents told us about it. Didn't we get lost in the forest once and start crying until some, some of the servants found us? Parents got so mad. Dang, that takes me back. We sure were idiots, weren't we? After all, Grandfather only only bought this island after using those funds to get rich, right? That means he must have had the gold before coming here. There's no way the gold's on this island. That's not necessarily so. Maybe the gold was hidden on the island from the beginning, and he bought the whole island just to ensure that it'd be his and his alone. There was a whole 10 metric tons of it, right? It seems more than realistic he tried to secure the place where it was hidden, rather than try to move it all. This epitaph was made two years ago, and since grandfather wrote it himself, yeah, it does make the legend of the gold seem more believable. The so-called witch's gold that revived the Ushiramiya family weighed 10 tons. Maybe that's sleeping somewhere, ready to be turned over to whoever can solve grandfather's riddle. Maybe that's why I did it. Uh, I guess that sounds like grandfather's style or something. <laughs> if it's true, that's pretty incredible. The epitaph carved into the plate was very mysterious, with something like a poem or song written on it. The text was incredibly disturbing, filled with the signs of grandfather's black magic hobby, and its contents were in truly bad taste. But it could definitely be viewed as a puzzle which, if solved, might lead to the hidden goal. Whether that's, the, whether that's what he intended or not, I can't even imagine what his true motive might have been. All we know for sure is that grandfather put this shady epitaph here so that everyone in the family could see it. We also know that he's hinted at the existence of the gold without ever talking about where it might be hidden, at least so far. These facts were all embellished by the imaginations of our parents, who were convinced that grandfather was challenging us to a battle of wits. Sounds just like my dad. So greedy that he takes something like this so seriously. He may laugh at grandfather's black magic obsession, but he still believed this story about the hidden gold. It just sounds so good. Well, it's certainly not a realistic story. At that time when grandfather was still nameless and had no connections, there was no way anyone would just lend him a massive quantity of gold bars for free. If such a person actually did exist, it's not unthinkable that grandfather would call it such a sponsor a witch. Yeah, but it's 10 times, 10 times! If you cash that in, how much would it come to? I mean, it had to be a ridiculous amount, right? 
It certainly would be a ridiculous amount. They say that the total amount of gold mined by humankind since the dawn of history is 100,000 metric tons at most. That one, that one of one, uh, uh, one of ten thousand of all the gold of humankind has obtained throughout history should belong to just one person. It's just insane. On top of that, this witch supposedly had all that gold collected in one place and was able to lend it to grandfather just like that. We're not talking about any ordinary person. Well, to me, that 10 tons number seems a bit... Well, to me, that 10 tons number seems pretty fishy. After all, no one's actually seen it except Grandfather, right? Even if we assume that some generous witch existed and lent him some gold, maybe it was closer to 10 kilograms than 10 tons. Even 10 kilograms would be a pretty incredible sum, right? 10 kilograms of gold is how much? Maria, who wasn't following the story and felt like she was being spoken to in riddles, finally found a place where she could ask us a question. It was a question I also wanted answered right then. Whether it was 10 kilograms or 10 tons, it still felt like a huge amount, but I had no idea how, how huge exactly. George Aniki folded his arms and tried to remember the market price of gold. Well... Even the value of gold is affected by the market, and even the value of physical gold can change depending on its purity and the trustworthiness of the foundry. You'd also need to pay handling fees to cash it in. However, that doesn't change the fact that it's a precious metal. Some people estimate that humanity will mine all the world's gold in half a century if gold mining continues at its current rate. Just guessing haphazardly, I think you could expect the price of about 10 million yen per kilogram. 2 million. Whoa! Just now, I randomly said 10 kilograms since it sounded smaller. But even that would be worth 20 million yen. I weigh 28 kilograms. <laughs> Which means that if we had Maria's weight in gold, we could estimate it's worth over 50 million yen. That's just unbelievable. How much would 10 tons be then? 10 kilograms is 20 million, which you multiply by a thousand, so um... Hold on, hold on. That's 20 million. You just gotta add the three zeros. So let me see, add three zeros. So it's 20 million. That'd be 20 billion, right? Huh? 20 billion yen? What the hell? How much is 20 billion yen actually worth? We can only measure it in our, in our relative pocketbooks. Anyway, let's say that a person's wages over a lifetime are about 200 million yen. You grow up and work like crazy, sacrificing your life for your company, and you're finally freed as you approach old age. Everything including retirement money might add up to 200 million yen. In other words, that's the amount of money that'll be made throughout a human's life. No, you could even call it the value of a life. So a hundred times that sum is an unbelievable amount of money. If you work from the age, if you work from age 20 to age 60, that's 40 years of work. So it's equal to 4,000 years of work wages. If you worked every day starting from the Jomon period, you'd only reach that number about now. Is 20 billion yen a lot? Maria, are you stupid? Heck yeah, it's a lot. Maria, you love shortcake, right? I could buy more shortcake than you could possibly eat for the rest of your life. However, while that might be possible with 20 billion yen in cash, I don't think it would be very realistic to have that much in gold bars all in one place. Just as I said, gold is extremely heavy, so it isn't exactly convenient as a method of storing wealth. Sure, you could imagine someone gathering their fortune together as incredibly high-value stocks or precious gems. You often hear of people who trade at their wealth for precious gems, so that they could carry it around with them during the chaotic times of the war. 
But you don't usually hear stories of people exchanging their wealth for gold. It may be heavy, but it's the most trusted and stable form of wealth internationally. So maybe that was a, maybe that was important. For example, bonds are just scraps of paper if the whole country goes under. You can also look at it that way. But even one 10 kilogram ingot is pretty heavy to carry around. Haven't you heard? A 50 kilogram person can't carry a 50 kilogram bag over their shoulder. With that many gold bars, the amount of labor and risk for one person would be hard to calculate. So what you're saying is, well, it'd be one thing if you had a stack of banknotes worth 20 billion yen. 20 billion yen in gold would be a big mountain that's practically be, it'd be kind of pointless. That's right. Although the legend of the gold does have a pretty interesting ring to it, just the part about the ten, just the part about the ten tons of gold makes it pretty much impossible. If you think about it logically like that, it sounds obviously fake. <laughs> kind of brings you back down to reality. Anyway, that's grandfather for you. Maybe he exaggerated the story of how some kind, wealthy person gave him a loan by saying he got 10 tons of gold from a witch. Even the number 10 tons feels pretty symbolic. You mean like his gratitude for the money from the money he borrowed was worth 10 tons of gold or something? Maybe some rich man leisured Maybe some rich man's leisured wife generously granted it to grandfather. And maybe he started calling this person a witch. I see. Jessica's example isn't bad. Someone who generously lent a huge sum of money to grandfather when he still had no reputation might as well be called a witch. Furthermore, grandfather actually did use that money to build a vast amount of wealth later on. The fact that this person was so great at judging people might also justify calling her a witch. Also, since she went through the trouble of lending all that money, she might have enthusiastically overseen how it was spent. The decision to unexpectedly get involved with the occupying forces and profit from the Korean War demands might have been inspired by the witch herself. That might explain why he claimed to have received both wealth and honor from her. I see. So in other words, this wench lent grandfather the funds necessary to provide the Ushira Mia family, and he owed her big time. And then he felt so grateful that he had a painting, a huge painting drawn and displayed. Yeah, it's not a crazy story. It's even possible this person was an old granny who looked like a witch. Maybe grandfather idolized her and that's why he had her drawn and looked so beautiful. I'll bet if we ever did meet this person, she wouldn't be nearly this pretty. Should I tell him? Should I tell him? I know a little bit about Uminaka. I've seen some shots. I don't know what goes down, you know? I don't know who dies. I don't know if anyone dies. I'm sure people die, but I don't really know. But I do know, I have seen um, a good amount of the characters. That's possible. The name Beatrice sounds pretty Western. And if you think about how everyone in our family has Western names, maybe even the name Beatrice is the result of grandfather trying to rearrange some Japanese person's name to make it sound Western. I get it, I get it. That means this pretty girl doesn't exist outside the picture. Guess that means I won't be able to rub those elegant bra- Yo! In the first place, isn't having a witch pretty bizarre by itself? Like you could find something like you could find something like that anywhere on earth. I laughed and made fun of the witch trying to distinguish myself from the kid I was six years ago, who feared the witch in the forest when Maria tugged on my sleeve. Watch out. Oh hold on, she mad. She like, you better watch how you speak on Beatrice. She got hitters and I'm one of them. <laughs> I could tell by how hard she pulled that she was a bit upset. What is it, Maria? Beatrice exists! Oh, Maria stared up at me, hold on. 
She had on her usual sour look, but I could tell she was angry by the color of her eyes. Witches exist! Witches exist! Oh, is she like, it, bro, is she tweaking again? Well, sure, they do exist. If you turn the TV on and watch anime or something. Exist! Witches exist! Hold on, she's tweaking. I started getting impatient, not knowing why Maria was jumping on me like this. Then Jessica tapped me on the shoulder and whispered, Idiot, you're smashing a kid's dream. Maria really believes things like witches and Beatrice exist. Come to think of it, Maria, in social studies at your school, when you were asked to write what you wanted to be when you grew up, you wrote a witch, didn't you? Maria nodded seriously. Tears started to run from the corner of her eyes. I see. To a girl who wants to become a witch in the future, the existence of Beatrice was proof that witches do exist in this real in this world, and was therefore an image that she yearned after and admired. Exist! Ow! Hold on! Exist! Ow! Stop! Witches exist! S stop! That hurts! But Battler still doesn't believe. Oh, she's crying. Look what you did, Battler. Shame on you. It's okay. Witches do exist. I believe it. George kneeled down and hugged Maria's head. Watching this, Jessica poked my side. So that's what it is. It's like shouting that Santa Claus doesn't exist in front of a child who believes in him on Christmas Eve. I'm not the kind of guy who likes to shatter a kid's dreams. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to make fun of your dreams, so I apologize. Beatrice does exist. Even now, she's living in the forest and comes to the mansion every night to peek in and see what everyone's doing. So you shouldn't go into the forest. At night, you mustn't, sk you mustn't stare into the dark forest. You might be seen by the witch of the forest, Beatrice. After all, Grandmother said so. <laughs> really? <laughs> Battler really believes? <laughs> yeah, I believe. <laughs> Sorry for doubting it. <laughs> Come on, let's make up. I stuck out my hand. Maria grabbed it with her tiny hand and we made up. Maria didn't grumble any more than that, so George and Jessica were relieved. She is a distraction. Oh. So this is where you all were. I was sure you had just left to go to the beach. Shannon carrying a basket and two... Oh, stop! Carrying a basket was surprised to find us all gathered in front of the portrait. Ah, Shannon. Well, this is the first time Battler seen Beatrice's portrait. He was just fascinated by it. That's right, it surely it certainly is fascinating. Beatrice is truly beautiful. I am sure that she captivated the master. In addition to the patron theory, there's also a theory that she was grandfather's first love. Either way, although, although it's been several decades since he met her, even now she holds a special place in his heart. Which must mean that he's still captivated by her. Sheesh. That must have made grandmother pretty jealous, huh? I'm not really sure, but that might actually be true. Apparently grandmother believed he was cheating on her with some blonde. Good smell! Good smell coming from Shannon! <laughs> Maria, sniffing, approached the basket Shannon was holding with interest. After hearing that, I noticed a fragrant scent with a touch of vanilla. Ah, oh, I apologize. I was told by Kumasawa to bring them to everyone. What is it, I wonder? 
Oh, excellent. Cookies. Wanna eat cookies? Wanna eat cookies? Give me the cookies. Please, eat as much as you would like. But, um... Would it be appropriate to serve cookies in a place like this in front of the portrait? Shana sent us a glance I seemed to ask what we wanted to do about it. Well, yeah, guess eating here will be bad manners, generally speaking. Maria. Mario, why don't we eat someplace else? Let's put the cookies in a bento and have a picnic. Have a picnic, have a picnic! If we can eat cookies, let's go! Yeah, let's go get some fresh air. We shouldn't stuff ourselves right in front of the witch. That's right. Didn't we say we wanted to go down to the beach in the first place? Let's go, let's go. Shannon. Sorry. But could I ask you to get us a blanket to sit on and some flasks of tea? Right. Certainly. Shannon received her instructions and gracefully bowed before retracing her steps. We headed for the beach on our own. Everyone headed in. The, everyone headed for the entrance in a group. Feeling as though the witch was staring down in our backs, I turned around once more. Battler, you still don't believe? Yeah. No, I believe. It'd be so much cooler that way. The golden witch Beatrice gave grandfather 10 tons of gold. And that gold might be sleeping around here somewhere. Besides, didn't grandfather write that strange epitaph as though challenging us to find it? I'd say that kind of adventurous story is way better. 20 billion yen worth of gold, huh? Even if we split it up between the four of us, that's still a ridiculous amount of money. 5 billion yen for each of us. Incredible. With that kind of money, you could probably make any sort of business prosper. Oh, fuck. We could live our whole lives fabulously without working at all. I don't want 10, I don't want 5 billion yen, I want cookies. Are you stupid? <laughs> Maria would take cookies over money. Still, 5 billion yen, that's like a dream. I swear if you do the glass cracking thing. Thank God, that would have scared me so bad. I hate when they crack the glass, it always scares me. Ridiculous. Is it possible that you all truly believe in Father's Legend of the Legend of the Gold? Of course we don't believe that story about the witch giving him gold. But there's no mistake about the gold itself. The fact that father obtained gold bars from an unknown source has been confirmed in several ways. We've heard that before the president of the Marusu company died, father showed him a large pile of gold somewhere. Father used that man's claim as proof that there were 10 tons worth. That's just nonsense of a senile old man. Along with father, he was just fabricating a story. You can't take it seriously. If that gold didn't exist, he wouldn't have been able to gather so much funding. Before the president died, he was a person with such sincere personality that he earned the respect of many in the business world. He wouldn't have become a partner to such fraud. Aniki. The president of the Marusu company definitely saw it. Ten tons of gold, clearly with his own eyes. Even more, dad let the president take one ingot at random and have it examined. The result of the examination showed that the 10 kilogram ingot was 99.99% pure. He said that the Ushiro Mia family crest, the one winged eagle, was imprinted on it. Almost instantly, the Ushiramiya legend of gold spread amongst the fixers of the business world. Gold from an unknown foundry has poor, has poor rate of conversion into money. Thinking that it was a chance for decisive profits, they accepted it as collateral. 
And as a result, father was able to receive massive loans. Is there no limit to the absurdity you're willing to accept? How old are you people? Are you still taking that nursery tale you heard as children seriously? Where is the proof that this 10 tons of gold even exists? Aren't you just parroting the lies of father and a few of clothes close to him? Of course, it's just a story. But still, Aniki, the amount of gold dad raised required a suitable amount of collateral. The amount of money dad raised required a suitable amount of collateral. Even if the gold itself was just a rumor, it's an undoubtable fact that he showed them a treasure of comparable worth. It was just an illusion of money created by our penniless father. He acted as though he actually had gold that he didn't exist. Fooling his sponsors. It was probably the gamble of a lifetime. Luckily, he used those fu those funds. The use of those funds proved successful. If the Korean War demands hadn't come and the Oshirimiya family had not been restored, father would have probably been hounded as hounded after as the crook of the century. So are you saying the goat never existed and father made it all up? Of course. And because of that, the illusion of gold became a mere inconvenience once, he, once he'd achieved enough success. That's why later on, father added all that about a witch and black magic, weakening the credibility of the entire story. In other words, he revealed that the illusion of the gold was a fabrication. If he claimed that to have received that gold from a witch, no one would believe that it existed at all, right? It's also possible he set it off for your sakes. Nevertheless, here comes some stupid offspring wanting to divide up this non-existent gold along with the rest of the inheritance. Rosa, don't, you t don't tell me that even you believe in a fabrication like this. Man, stop dragging her into this stuff, bro. Well, I, I can't prove whether or not father really had the gold. I just want to claim my rightful share as one of his father's four children. It seems even you have started to talk that way, Rosa. I see, so that's what you're all getting at. You're trying to claim that I'm the one attempting to keep the gold for myself. You've gathered a massive supply of funds, that's a fact. If we rule out the possibility that you've been embezzling father's personal funds, then there's only one possibility left, right? Aniki, we've been thinking that you might have found those 10 tons of gold bars. Ridiculous. Such a thing never existed in the first place. Then explain yourself. Was it embezzlement of father's assets or father's hidden gold? How could you have gathered so much funding if not by one of these methods? Even I have many friends in the political and financial realms. I have earned their cooperation, nothing more. And on that matter, I have no responsibility to explain myself to you. You understand, don't you? There are some topics that are not, not to be spoken of. If you insist on that point, that's all well and good for now. But Aniki, Dad doesn't have long. Nobody can ensure that he'll live to see this day next year. The inheritance process will begin at the instant of Dad's death. We'll all arrange for lawyers and accountants who are impartial to all of us and have them inspect Dad's financial loose situation. At that time, if it comes to light that you've unjustly interfered with Father's money, you understand, right? I don't have a clue what you're talking about. You're starting to make me feel as indignant of my as my wife was. Of course, Father's gold is part of Father's fortune. We understand it's money you can't reveal openly. But the four siblings should have an equal right to it. In other words, we're gonna have your financial situation investigated as well as Dad's to determine whether you're hoarding the gold or not. Isn't this a great opportunity? Right now, prove the existence of your so-called support from friends and acquaintances. 
That way we can sportingly apologize for foolishly doubting you. Right, Rosa? Bro, leave her out of this! That's right. Kraus, you were the one who's dodging the issue. If you were guiltless, you could just prove that you were in the right, but you were not even trying to do so. Let's go, I made it. However, Anaki, we still have to consider your position here. As Dad's representative, you're probably bearing a larger share of the burden than we are. We've been ter we've been living terribly relaxed lives until now, so it wouldn't be fair for the rest of us to complain without taking your efforts into account. It seems like you cannot make up your mind whether to flatter me or slander me. Please, get to the point. Basically, randomly investigate and nitpicky aspects of father's wealth seems like a pretty crude way to go about it. As you said, Kraus, there may have been movements of money that are difficult to explain. We've come to consult with you today while fully aware of that point. Both sides stand to gain from this talking about this now. A consultation. When the inheritance was divided, when the inheritance is divided, you'll be rewarded for your years of hard work taking care of dad by an agreement that that's generous in your favor. Don't misunderstand us, Nissan. We aren't saying we'll abandon our rights, but when we make our claim for what we deserve, we might as well offer a generous understanding for your position. That's what we mean. In other words, if you accept our conditions, then when the inheritance is divided, we'll leave the investigation of father's financial situation to you. All of the siblings from Ava downward suspected that Kraus was trying to steal their father's wealth. So letting Kraus report the state of the state of the wealth was extremely contradictory and a huge concession. If, as they claimed, Kraus was actually embezzling money. Kraus would be able to hide that fact. Besides which, it'd be possible for him to give, for him to control the distribution of the inheritance in a manner favorable to himself. Kraus realized this sounded too good to be true. Couldn't help but feel suspicious. He couldn't help but worry about what they'd ask for in exchange. After mistrusting me completely, you now say that you're willing to restore your confidence in me as the eldest sibling. So what is it you really want in return? Just what we deserve as siblings. You aren't the kind of person who'd steal dad's property. But you are also aren't being financed by some patron. Considering all that, there's only there's only a, there's a certain explanation that satisfies the rest of us. Nissan, you found 10 tons of gold and use that as collateral to gather some funding. Yes, just like father did in the past, right? If that's the case, there won't be any funny business in father's finances. You've always been a good son looking after father. Why do we, why do we mistrust a person like that? You're being so roundabout I can barely understand you. Please, be clearer in more practical terms. Our first condition. You must admit that you found dad's gold. Are you asking me to admit I possess gold that doesn't exist? Our second condition. You'll acknowledge that each sibling has a right to share of the gold. Has a right to a share of the gold and you will pay out those shares. How foolish. With that non-existent 20 billion yen of gold, that would be 5 billion yen per person. Are you telling me to pay a total of 15 billion yen? Ridiculous. Keep listening to the end, stupid! We know that much money can't just pop up out of nowhere. We're not asking you to make an impossible deal. Of course, regarding the portions of the gold, we plan to reward you plenty for your hard work until now. Our third condition, the portion of the gold to the one bearing the title of successor to the Ushiramiya family, 
will be 50%. The remainder will be considered the fair share for the siblings and divided up. Of course, this also includes you, Kraus. Of the 20 billion, 12.5 billion will go to Anaki. 2.5 billion will go to Ava. 2.5 billion will go to me. And 2.5 will go to Rosa. That division scheme makes me so grateful I could cry. So you're saying, for the sake of the girl that doesn't exist, I must pay you 7.5 billion yen. What's wrong? Nissan, your share is five times the size of ours. These are such good terms, I'd be jumping for joy. Our fourth condition. The gold will be liquidated and distributed along with the inheritance at the time of father's death. However, as a deposit, 10% of our portions are to be paid to us promptly. These payments must be made before March of next year. What do you think, Kraus? This is a fair chance for you to restore your, the trust regarding your handling of father's assets, isn't it? Of course, it might be impossible to get a whole 7.5 billion before father dies. But it should be possible for you to manage a deposit of 7. 7, 750 million, right? Paying 700 million in half a year might, might sound like a pain. But you should be able to manage it. What with your friends and the political and business spheres. Normally, we'd hope to receive the 7.5 billion right now all at once. But out of concern for you, we'll show our sincerity by asking for only 10% of that for the time being. The remaining 90% can wait until the inheritance is distributed. See? Even you'd be capable of managing a mere 10% to show your sincerity. So you're t trying to sell me the right to assets father's financial situation for 750 million yen. <laughs> How impressive. You all certainly have grown. To think that I'm not the one being offered deals. Nissan, if you accept these terms, the rest of us siblings will leave the investigation of father's assets to you. However, the results of that investigation will be subject to scrutiny. It's only natural, right? We'd be so sad if you managed things if you manage things so that our 7.5 billion shares shrink. We'll avoid complaining as a general rule. Just make sure you do it neat and tidy. As long as you don't try anything that's blatantly obvious, we've got no intention of stirring things up. We want our inheritance quickly too. We don't want to get it all drawn out and left hanging. If a complaint is made, who would carry out the follow-up investigation? We don't mind if it's you. This is probably the first and last chance for our siblings to reach a consensus. I believe it won't come to that. Looks like even you can speak up now then, Rosa. By this point, it's obvious that Kraus wasn't at all trusted as the oldest sibling, so there's no need to go into detail. The formerly tyrannical oldest brother, who had always abused his privileges and violated the other siblings' shares. It was in response to this that the other three, now adults, were finally teaming up and striking back for the first time. Sorry, but there's more. Our fifth condition. This decision must take precedent over father's will. Later on, we don't want some will to appear and make this decision completely irrelevant. I see you're very cautious. Then let me ask. If the gold really were found, what would you do? Since you'll be making the payments to us for what the gold's worth, the rest of us really don't care if we ever see the gold or not. You can think of our share as an advance payment. It's good to have dreams, isn't it? You plan to turn this island into a resort, right? You might stumble upon the gold by chance during construction. Ava let out a high-pitched laugh. Kraus watched but didn't even flinch. 
Let me add a seventh condition before I accept. In the situation that any sibling other than me finds the gold, they will immediately turn it over to me. Yes, yes, of course. We'll hold on to it for you. It was a play on words. Of course, the others who are forcing Kraus to pay money for some non-existent gold wouldn't save Kraus, Kraus's portion if they actually found it. From the beginning, this deal had been nothing more than a threat directed at Kraus. Regardless of the actual facts, it was still extremely likely that Kraus was embezzling his father's assets. When Kinzo faced death at last and had his inheritance distributed, some unpleasant facts would surely come to light. That could easily become fatal to Kraus. The others had spotted this weak point and were threatening their brother under a veil of compromise, trying to wring a huge sum of money out of him. However, they had forgotten one thing. They'd forgotten that their brother's main brain moved so swiftly, at least when it came to cunning and guile, that they'd been forced to band together to combat him. While Leva couldn't stop smiling, sure of her victory, Kraus let out a gloating laugh to show how relaxed he was. <laughs> this all makes for such a touching story. My estrangement from you all has left a deep pain in my heart. If accepting these conditions means we siblings can become friends again, it would please me to no end. I'd be happy to agree to your deal. Rejoice, Rosa. We have reached an understanding. Why do y'all keep why y'all why y'all keep singling out Rosa, bro? Leave her alone. Rosa's expression dimmed. It was never a good sign when her brother started talking like this. Ava also keenly picked up on this. That's probably why she was unable to wipe away the sense of unease, even though Kraus had obediently accepted the deal. My, how obedient of you. It's not like you at all. What a cruel thing to say. Are you implying that I have some un ulterior motive? Of course I don't. I'm just the same as all of you. Just the same as all of you. He seems to emphasize just that one part. The color of Rudolph's face darkened. To him, it sounded as though Kraus was saying, I have a plan similar to yours. So Rudolph panicked. He rushed to bring this nearly resolved discussion to a conclusion. <laughs> then we're good. So, Anaki, would you mind signing here? This is a written contract summarizing the discussion we've just been having. There's one for each of us. Everyone will sign for the same contents. Rudolph took four written contracts out of his breast pocket that had the details of their deal written on them. The seventh condition you propose will of course be added right now. Don't worry about that. Anaki, need a pen? Rudolph took a fountain pen out of his breast pocket and offered it to Kraus. Kraus made as if to accept it, but then with a small laugh, he drew back his hand without taking it and spoke. Actually, in order to ensure that this arrangement is properly executed, I'd like to propose an amendment on just one point. As soon as Kraus said that single sentence, all of the siblings felt as though something ominous was creeping up their backs at the same time. That won't do. We've already decided, haven't we? Just stay quiet and sign it. Why are you in such a hurry, Ava? Of course I'll sign. I promise the share of gold going to all of you will be 7.5 billion. I also promise that when father's inheritance is distributed, I will cleanly and neatly liquidate it. However, there is one point I simply must insist that you compromise on. What are you talking about? What don't you like? The part about promptly paying 10% of your share, 750 million yen. As you pointed out, my financial situation is far from prosperous. While I can guarantee that I will collect on various future investments, I must admit that I am quite poor at the present moment. 
In short, I have absolutely no money that I can move around right now. I am incompetent, and my business sense is dull. Since I am a, since I am the loser you all claim me to be, I don't have the power to move 750 million yen in just half a year. That, that can't be true. Are you trying to deceive us with that with such a half-based trick? At the time of the division of the inheritance, I will liquidate everything at once. Remove the condition that I must pay 10% in advance. That is the only condition under which I am willing to sign. Kraus, that 10% is nothing more than a measure of your Nothing is nothing more than a number to measure your sincerity, isn't it? All things being equal, you shouldn't have any room to negotiate at all. We're doing you a huge favor by offering to let things slide for just 10% in good faith money. Now that we've explained that, you rejecting the offer would seriously damage our trust and relationship, right? Hideyoshi had a humble expression on his face and was rubbing his hands together, but his eyes weren't calm at all. Kraus had already seen through the shadow in the depths of those eyes. <laughs> Why are you all in such a rush? Or could it be that you're afraid of something? Rosa, won't you tell me alone? Secretly, so the rest of the siblings can't hear? It's not as... it's not as though I... Quit it, Aniki. All we're asking is whether you're gonna sign or not. Just forget about making any strange deals or any other suspicious moves. You say I have no room to negotiate. Are you trying to claim that I am in a weak position? Which therefore puts us in an unequal relationship? Shivers began to crawl up Rudolph's back. He began to feel himself getting overwhelmed by the height of his brother's completely insurmountable wall and the long shadow that had existed since they were children. Shouldn't deals be made between those on even footings? From my perspective, this deal will help restore the long lost trust of my younger siblings and deepen the love between us. It's an old problem that's been eating at me and one I would prefer to resolve as soon as possible. I would be overjoyed if we could resolve it today. However, it seems I'm not the only one who'd be quite glad to close this deal quickly, am I wrong? Kraus stares at each of his siblings. They avoided his gaze with animal-like instinct. Only Hideyoshi was slow in avoiding it, so he was caught by Kraus's gaze. Hideyoshi. I hear your company's been doing extremely well lately. At a brisk pace and it went public, and both its track record and its stock prices have soared. I am truly jealous. We aren't here to talk about my husband. However, it is unfortunate that you have ne neglected your stockholders. It's even more unfortunate that you were unable to solidify your base when you became stocklisted. Before you realized that some bad natured colleagues of yours had brought up a huge share of your company's stock, right? How could you know about that? The same way you knew about me. If it's possible to collect evidence proving that no one would offer a loan to me, then it's possible for me to collect evidence on you. Is it really so unexpected as that? Kraus grinned broadly. In contrast, Hideyoshi's face was rapidly turning pale. Hideyoshi's company was a restaurant chain, managed comp management company that he started from nothing. Thanks to Hideyoshi's management efforts, the company had ex ex achieved success repeatedly, expanding its range and a petition to make it a stock-listed company that has recently succeeded. The greatest advantage of being in a stock-holding system is that you can sell stock certificates and gain a large amount of financing. That amount tends to be far greater than a business's normal profits. So this is an extremely effective way to gather massive funds to expand a business further. However, in exchange for the financing of the company, the stockholders gain certain rights. They're given rights that allow them to observe and guide the company they've invested in, leading to profits even greater than their original investments. This right is guaranteed to the stockholders, 
and they sometimes use it to dismiss ineffectual management. The right allows them to keep an eye on management and prevent the money they've invested in the company from going to waste. However, if they use it forcibly, they can eject the former management and take over the company. After all, dismissing management and nominating new management are powers held by the general body of all shareholders. That power is determined by the, the, by the majority decision of the stockholders, and people who hold more stock get to cast more votes. In other words, if some person or group holds a majority of the stock, they can freely chase out the old management and make the president anyone they'd like. If they want it, if they want, it's also possible for them to make themselves president. Most companies take various offensive measures to stop malicious people from buying up their stock and threatening their position. Like ensuring that lots of stock is bought up by, the, bought up by, the, by those close to them, such as company employees. However, Hideyoshi's company had only recently become stock listed, and he hadn't had the time to strengthen those defensive measures. Or maybe Hideyoshi was so engrossed in the management of his company that he couldn't properly understand the dangers of being stock listed. It's hard to say whether he should have viewed he should be viewed as a kind-hearted manager immersed in the work of a management, or a foolish manager who had his feet swept out from under him. In other words, there existed some people who wouldn't let him get away with that naive, naivety unscathed. They began repeatedly buying up stock in Hideyoshi's company, rapidly gaining such strength that they couldn't be ignored. They then sent anonymous documents to the shareholders in an attempt to gain control of a majority. The documents read, the current management continues to make pointless investments in ignoring the needs of the stockholders. Let us force the current management to retire. Cut the... I apologize. Let us force the current management to retire, cut the current wasted investments, and let this company be born again as one that gives back to its stockholders. It's very difficult to make the actual state of the company's management known. The fruits of Hideyoshi's sleepless nights and constant concern for his company were cruelly distorted, and he lost the trust of his stockholders. Thanks to these efforts, this group had almost collected a majority of the company's stock. At that point, even Hideyoshi noticed and started to buy back the stock, but the stockholders realized that the company was undergoing an acquisition maneuver, and each demanded a ridiculous price for the shares that Hideyoshi was trying to buy back. They continually tortured Hideyoshi, who had no leeway in the negotiation of the price. One of the certainties of capitalism is that the price will rise when two parties vie for the same thing. And one of the certainties of democracy is that the majority controls everything. So in the end, whoever manages to buy up the most stock wins. Put another way, whoever has the most money wins. Unless Hideyoshi could obtain a large sum of money at this critical time, he could easily lose all that he had built so far. Dang! I'd never let that happen to me. Therefore, more than anything else, he wanted a lot of money right now. He couldn't wait for the division of Kenzo's inheritance, since no one knew when he would die. And you, Rudolph, have been in quite a lot of trouble lately, no? Trouble lately too, haven't you? You always hear people say it's terrifying overseas, but it seems it's really true. American trials settle quite emotionally. They never hand down generous judgments to foreigners. Weren't you advised by your lord to, that making a settlement with the other party would be more economical in the long run? What is this all about? Well, it's just some trouble from work. No big deal. Nothing you can't settle with money. Kyrie's, Kyrie immediately guessed the meaning behind the subtle expression on Rudolph's face. Her husband had gotten wrapped up in some kind of trouble without her knowledge and had been worrying over it, over it alone. That's right. In this world, anything can be settled with money. After all, it can even buy back the broken bonds between siblings. America is very fussy about the violation of rights. But with money, anything can be settled. Long live capitalism. Though, 
Rumor has it that the settlement money could be as high as seven million dollars. Rudolph had been building a large amount of wealth with a certain type of niche industry. However, a niche is a niche. It definitely wasn't a business exposed to the light of day. An American corporate giant was trying to accuse Rudolph's company of violating their rights. For various reasons, it was thought that for thought that victory for Rudolph in this trial would be extremely unlikely, and he was being forced into an all-out surrender. But even so, there was a way for this to be resolved with money. If he could just pay that money, it might still be painful, but he'd be able to pick himself back up. But if he didn't pay, he'd lose everything. Therefore, more than anything else, he wanted a lot of money right now. Rosa, you're a good and noble little sister. You wouldn't get yourself involved in a dangerous money game. However, your soft-hearted nature has brought you trouble, hasn't it? In my opinion, becoming a co-signer for anything isn't something one should enter into lightly. Uh, um... It's none of your business! Rosa unchar uncharacteristically laid bare her emotions and yelled. After all, no one was supposed to know that. As Kraus watched, he let slip a muffled laugh. Without exception, every one of them, more than anything else, wanted a lot of money right now. In other words, the situation had been reversed. After all, the person the younger siblings were threatening was the only one who had no urgent need for a large sum of money. The other three, however, wanted a lot of money quickly no matter the cost. In other words, the longer it took to establish this deal, the better position Kraus would be in. Just kill him! Kraus was extremely sly. He had known of their Achilles heel from the beginning. Even so, he had not been certain. Therefore, he had hidden his knowledge until the very end, striking back only after analyzing their attitudes. If it were possible, I would like nothing more than to raise some money for my adorable siblings in their time of need. But unfortunately, I have nothing on hand. If you know of any sponsors that might be able to raise the whole 750 million, I suggest you try there first. Cross's elated words were so obviously detached from what he actually felt. The other siblings could do nothing more than listen, grinding their teeth. If they could think of a sponsor that convenient, they wouldn't have kept up the charade. They had entered this huge battle specifically because they had exhausted all other options. However, if you do insist on relying on your big brother, I wouldn't mind using my influence to help you find such a sponsor. Oh, wait. I do believe you said I have no influence. Well, then I'm afraid I won't be much of help to you. <laughs> this bastard is evil. In my humble opinion, we should kill him. Krause's low, gloating laugh began to fill the parlor. The youngest siblings who had been driving the oldest brother into a corner until a moment ago could do nothing more than grimace and grind their teeth. Don't make me laugh. As if I'd ever put myself in your debt. Don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh! I... If we relied on you, how exactly would you help us? I told you, didn't I? All I can do is find other sponsors for you. Of course, I will negotiate for the highest interest rate possible. <laughs> it's a shame to see how people treat their own family, bro. They are wrong. They are wrong here. All of them are in the wrong here. But Kraus specifically is a bastard. Damn you. Taking advantage of us. Honey, please calm down. I am calm. I'm extremely cool. You bastard. Kyrie grabs her husband at hand, but that action made him feel even more pitiful, so Rudolph shook it off. 
Kraus laughed as though watching something highly amusing. In times like these, it certainly would be nice to find father's hidden gold. If you did, you could split it up into 2.5 billion yen portions right now. How sad, how very sad. How extremely, totally, truly, hopefully sad. Hopelessly sad. Tonight, let us all drink together. As we solve the riddle of Beatrice's epitaph and discover the location of father's hidden gold. If we four friendly siblings were together, there's surely no puzzle we can't solve. <laughs> Is it about to crack? Quite an interesting scheme. Well then, what are the conditions they've attached? Kanon? Well, whether or not Kraus actually discovers the gold, he'll pay Ava, Rudolph, and Rosa a total of 7.5 billion yen for their shares. However, 10% of that will be paid before March. That ugly laugh. Kraus, you dunce! To think he would have his feet swept out under him by his younger siblings. How truly amusing. But, it sounds as though they tripped when going in for the kill, yes? Yes. Kraus exposed the fact that Ava and the younger siblings all have an urgent need for money. Is there even any need to expose such obvious facts? That irresolute, incompetent man! What are they doing now? That conversation has been put on hold for the time being. Now, Beatrice's epitaph is being discussed. So they're trying to solve the riddle and find where my gold is hidden. Yes. Kenzo sets down his spectacles and snorted. it. I can't find a good voice for him. Will the miracle be fulfilled first? Or will those fools expose the gold first? What a show this will be. At the very moment those fools solve my puzzle, I will suffer utter defeat. They can suck my corpse down to the last fragment of bone. The greed of fools that can... Well, the bro, freaking telemarketers, dang! I was just getting into my voice acting bag, too, screwing me up. They can suck my corpse down to the last fragment of bone. The greed of fools can allow great magic to bring forth a miracle. And yet, if the fulfillment of the miracle comes first, if it comes first, Beatrice will be resurrected again. The smile I'd have been chasing half my life will be restored. Oh, Beatrice! Soon will come the sacred night when we shall bet upon a miracle and the game of demons shall begin. I will surely prove triumphant and survive. I'll let you have the lives of all those others. I don't need wealth or honor or assets or gold or anything. All I want is to see her smile one last time. He is dying! Kenzo choked, apparently in great pain. Kanon got closer and tried to pat his master's back, but Kenzo motioned for him to stop. Do you know why I went through the trouble of exposing the hidden location of the goal in a place that everyone can see? No. It is because magical power is determined by risk. If the number of people who try to deter Discover Beatrice's gold is great, and the danger of them succeeding is great as well. Then the power of magic will bring about a grand miracle if we succeed despite the odds. In other words, magic is a game. It is not the case. It is not the case that the one who performs the best becomes the victor. 
The victor performs the best because he has been granted magic. Do you see? It is similar to how the miracle of life can be granted only after winning against the divine odds of seven, several hundred million to one. Is this a little difficult for you? My apologies. That's fine. It all comes down to this. I will give all that I have built upon to the one who solves the mystery of Beatrice's epitaph. Wealth, honor, gold, and in the inheritance of the Ashura Mia family. Everything that I have established. My child certainly, my children certainly aren't the only ones with the right to attempt to solve this riddle. Anyone who solves the riddle will, be, will have the right to gain everything, even you. However, I couldn't possibly understand such a difficult riddle. Of course, I made it difficult, but you must try to solve it as well. That will form the seed that summons the miracles of my magic. If everyone attempts it and everyone fails, that will be that. However, if the miracles come together and give birth to a magical power, it will happen. Beatrice will survive, will revive. That is why you must attempt it too. Everyone must attempt it. And in doing so, they will give strength to my magic. Do you understand? Yes. I will try. For a long time, Kenzo repeatedly muttered to himself, agitated and clutching at his head. Kanan stayed where he was, alert and unmoving, until he was given the next order from his master. Kenzo eventually realized this. Very well. Leave me. There is a bag of sweets on the liquor cabinet. You can take some with you as a reward. I'm fine. After all, I am furniture. So furniture doesn't eat sweets? Well, I suppose it stands to reason. In that case, leave me. Yes, excuse me. Kanon bowed and left the study. As the door closed, a heavy locking noise sounded out. But it was not the sound of Kanon locking the door. It was the door unlocking automatically. No one could enter without Kenzo's a pinch of permission. And once they left, they could not enter again. It was a mechanism that Kenzo, unable to trust his blood relatives, had created to seal himself up in his own study and isolate it from the outside world. He was already unable to trust anyone excepting, excepting not the children who shared his blood, but those servants who called themselves furniture. Every time I think it's going to do the cracking thing, it doesn't. It's about to make me mad. Nanjo, how are you feeling? Nanjo, how are you feeling? Ah, uh, Genji. It's just that there's no room, there's no place for me to be anymore. With a bitter laugh, Nanjo turned to face the door to the parlor. That look was apparently enough to tell Genji what Nanjo wanted to say. For the most part, Genji also understood the family situation. It must have made him want to frown. Knowing that right now in his lounge, the master he served was being discussed so disrespectfully. But it would have been very difficult to gather that from his indifferent expression. Still, I don't understand. Why did Kenzo have something so provocative written, I wonder? Nanjo looked at the portrait of Beatrice. No, he actually directed his gaze beneath the portrait, at the plate with the epitaph. I do not presume to understand Master's thoughts. However, I'm sure he had a deep reason for doing so. Since long ago, when Kenzo played chess, he would always prepare his moves according to some far-reaching judgment. Yeah, sometimes even to make moves I couldn't understand. For an average person like me, it was impossible to see through to whatever it was he was planning. Sometimes I wonder if this might be some kind of will in the master's eyes. 
Perhaps he wishes to hand over his wealth and title to the one who can understand it. So you're thinking he may have wanted the four siblings to work together and solve the riddle before some outsider like myself solved it. Kenzo may speak of his children in insulting terms, but perhaps he also wants them to repair their relationship. It certainly would be heartwarming if, as Nanjo suggested, this epitaph had been made to repair the sibling's relationship. However, both Nanjo and Genji knew that nothing could be more impossible than this. They'd known Kenzo more than anyone, and Kenzo trusted them more than his own relatives. But even they could not guess his true motives. The master always says that everyone has the right to try to guess the riddle even if they are not a member of this family. What about you, Dr. Nanjo? No, no. It's a little too difficult a puzzle for a seeing old lone man. Actually, I once wrote this epitaph down in my notebook. Night after night, I would try to solve it before going to sleep. But it really is hard. It looks like we might have some free time to relax and consider it before someone comes to get us. What do you say, Genji? I am nothing more than furniture and service to the master. Golden assets are unnecessary to me. My, you're very modest. I imagine that's why Kenzo trusts you so much. If so, I am honored. As Nanjo lightly laughed in response, he once again looked at the epitaph. Behold the sweet rich river, running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the golden land, follow its path downstream in search of the key. The epitaph on the portrait called my beloved witch Beatrice goes as follows. Behold the sweet fish river, behold the sweet fish river running through my beloved hometown. You who seek the golden land, follow its path downstream in search of the key. As you travel down it, you will see a village. In that village, look for the shore the two will tell you of. There sleeps the key to the golden land. The one who obtains the key must then travel to the golden land in accordance with these rules. On the first twilight, offer the six chosen and buy the key as sacrifices. On the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. On the third twilight, those who remain shall praise my noble name. On the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. On the fifth twilight, gouge the chest and kill. On the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. On the ninth twilight, the witch shall revive, and none shall be left alive. On the tenth twilight, at journey's end, you shall attain to the power of the Golden Land's treasures once and for the last time. The witch shall praise the wise and bestow four treasures. One shall be all the gold from the Golden Land. One shall be the resurrection of all the dead souls. One shall be the resurrection of the love that was lost. One shall be, one shall be to put the witch for sleep for all time. Sleep peacefully, my beloved witch Beatrice. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll tap into the next one. Bro, I don't know when it's gonna turn up, but it's about to turn up. Holy crap. We're getting into like actual like lore now. And we're figuring out like why why we're you know that we're finally getting into like actual plot. So I'm getting I'm 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 more excited to play. I mean, I've been excited to play. I've been I've been enjoying this so far. But now that we're actually getting into the plot and I'm, you know, I'm getting an idea of what the, what's going to, what's going to be happening. I'm really looking forward to this game. So peace out. Love y'all. Tap into the next one.